Once again, we're going to jump back to our step seven where we calculated the general and administrative. We're going to look at the salaries. Later, we're going to see where that note is calculated as well. Okay, so there is our general and administrative that we pulled over. And then all this other stuff are going to be other areas that we haven't put a prior budget to. One's going to be dividends. Are we going to pay out dividends to the shareholders? And we're going to have to make an assumption on that. We have the loan interest here. So we have two loans out at this point. We're assuming that the interest rate is 0.01 for a month, you know, not a yearly interest rate for like a monthly interest rate. So we're saying this 12,000 here, 12,000 times 0.01. That's where this 120 is. We're paying 120 cash on that. And then we've got the uh, loan of 500,000 times 0.01, which we also saw on the general administrative expense. And so there's that uh, that 5,000 there. Purchase of equipment. We don't have anything in July that we're estimating, but that's another thing that we'd have to think about. Are we purchasing equipment for cash, the cash portion of the purchase of equipment? Anything that we financed, of course, wouldn't be on the cash budget. Okay, so then if we added all this up, I won't do the calculator, but if we added all this up, we would then come out to the cash disbursements of the 4, 427, 177. And then if we subtracted out these two, then we would have the cash receipts up here of 530, 568 minus the 427, 177. And that's going to give us 103, 391. Now I'm going to make another assumption that we commonly do in, in a problem, commonly do in practice, and that's going to be that we want to maintain a minimum balance of 40,000. That's going to be an assumption that we're going to make in this particular problem. And if we uh, receive more than that, if we're above the 40,000 each month, we're going to pay off the line of credit. So we have this line of credit. That's what this short-term loan is. We're basically saying, hey, if we dip under 40,000, take out a loan. We've made a line of credit in order to do that, to, to have some security there. And if we go over that uh, period, uh, that amount of 40000 then let's pay off the short-term loan. We're over that amount. We're going to pay off the short-term loan, 12000 And then if we uh, calculate our ending balance, we then have the 530, 568 minus the 427, 177 minus the 12000 And we have the $91 uh 391 now okay so that 91 391 is the ending balance of july which will be the beginning balance of august that's where we're going to start in august then we're going to go through the same process again so we'll jump through a little bit faster here same ideas though we got the cash receipts from customers i won't go back and pull that but we're going to pull it from the same place we pulled this and then if we add these two up we've got the total cash available then we're going to go through our disbursements. So we got first payments for raw materials. Now this number here we got from our balance sheet last time because remember there's a timing difference. This time we're going to have to bounce back to our raw materials because even though we are in August, remember the assumption is that in a cash flow we're going to we're going to, all the purchases we made in July we're going to pay for in August. So that's why this number here is what we're going to pay for in August and we have to jump back here and pull that number so just uh, be careful there that we're always kind of a month off here because we're talking about cash flow which is different than purchases when we purchased it all the rest of it's going to be the same so same this is coming from the same area we have to jump back same area we have to jump back and pull these same numbers out so same process in these items here and then we're going to say we have dividends. So we're, this problem is going to make an assumption that we did pay dividends or we're going to pay dividends. We're planning on paying dividends in August. So that's going to be this 10000 that we would have to add to our budget, our assumption cash dividends in this case. And we don't have the interest on the loan because we paid it off last time. And we still have the 5000 interest on the long-term loan. And then if we added all these up, if we added all these up, we would get to the four uh, forty-five uh, thousand sixty, and then if we subtract this out, the five seventy-eight five ninety-one minus the cash disbursements four four five uh, sixty, we come up to the one thirty-three five thirty-one, and of course we don't have to pay off the loan. We're over our minimum balance of forty, so we're not going to have any loan adjustment there. 
and we could just pull that number down and that's our ending balance for the month of august that then will be of course the beginning balance for september so here's the beginning balance for september same process we'll go through it even a bit faster so we're going to pull all these numbers over this came from the same place as this if we add these two up we then come up with this the 607 531 then we're going to have the disbursements once again this is going to come from the same place that we pulled this out just remember that you got that timing difference in terms of when we received it as opposed to when we purchased it these are just going to be pulled over in the similar fashion same all the way down we don't have the dividends this time because that's going to be a separate assumption we're going to have to make book problems going to have to give it to us real life we're going to have to make the assumption no interest on the short-term loan we still have the five thousand on the long-term loan and now we're going to assume that we had a purchase of equipment of 130,000. So we're going to assume that we're going to purchase equipment in September, 130,000. That 130 only represents the cash disbursement because we're talking about the cash disbursements here. So we have that item. And then if we add all these up, then we're adding all these up. We're getting the 575, 691. And that's going to be a preliminary balance of 31,840. And then we're going to have an adjustment because that 31,840 is below the 40,000 minimum we want to have. Therefore, we're going to need a loan of 8,186 so that this 31,840 can come up to that minimum balance we want of 40,000. Okay, so there's all, there's our three months. If we total this up just to see what the total for the three months would be, just be careful if you do something like this. You you got to remember that we're starting off at the beginning of the three month period. So we're not adding these three up. We're saying okay, we're starting off at the forty thousand at the beginning of July, and then we're doing the total you know for the total three month period. Then we're going to add these three up, and then if we add this plus this, we come out to the one million four ninety one seven sixty eight. And then we can add these three columns up all the way down. So we're adding these three columns up all the way down. If we sum all these up, then we come up to the 1447928. If we subtract this number minus this number, the receipts minus the disbursements, 43,840. And we had the total adjustments, which is the 12 minus the 8160, uh, because we took out a 12,000. Uh, we paid off the 12,000 loan and then we took out another 12,000 loan here. So this is actually a subtraction problem. And we, and we brought this out and that brings our ending balance to the 40,000, the 43,840 minus the 3,840. So these are broken out per month. This is broken out for the total quarter.